What's going on, everyone? Badger here. Make sure to like and sub, and let's get into this. Uh, you know, I saw the title of this and read a little bit of it, and I was like, well, I have to cover this because this is apparently why I was on a three-hour stream being defensive for some reason for most of the time, uh, explaining why I thought, even though I understood that nuance was possibly being pointed out, really it just sounded like we were minimizing the damage uh, that SBI and uh, other consulting companies have done. And it turns out like that's exactly what happened. No, I didn't just want to be right. Uh, all the new information was completely at odds with all the previous information. And now, thankfully, uh, John F. Trent at that part place is pointing this out. I wish I had seen this uh, a couple days ago when it came out. So here we have for all of you from that part place, by John F. Trent. Sweet Baby Inc. employees appear to have run a misinformation campaign in order to deflect just how much influence the company has over video game developers. Multiple Sweet Baby Inc. employees attempted to downplay how much influence the company has over the video game industry as they attempted to cancel Cabrutus, uh, the creator of the Steam curator list that tracks all of the games that Sweet Baby Inc. has worked on and are available to purchase on Steam. And of course, thankfully, uh, at least as of I think a day or two ago, he's fought and won all of those claims. It's almost 300,000 strong. I think they're like 270 something thousand uh, on that curator list. That, of course, lists and tracks all the games that Sweet Baby Inc. have worked on and are available to purchase on Steam. Maya Kramer, who uses the handle, handle Lego Butts, yes, and Lego Butts was the subject of many a tweet in that stream, uh, claimed in a lengthy thread at the end of February, these people think a company of narrative designers that freelances on projects has somehow single-handedly caused the employment collapse in games instead of you know, the insane notion of infinite growth or capitalist greed. It's easier to blame diversity than that somehow. You know, well, uh, Kramer added, I still think it's way more likely that they know that's not the case and are just fine with looking stupid so long as it justifies them being loudly anti-woke, whatever that means. And of course, false, false. If there were ever successful examples of woke, modern woke, I, I would go ahead. I would actually point it out as a successful translation of that message. There hasn't been any successful translations of that message, not in any meaningful way. And uh, no, it, it's every time this is the point. Even people that don't don't think woke is a thing, whatever, they have issues with this, even if they can't put it to words. Why? So it's not just being it's not just being about anti woke. Uh, later in the thread, Kramer added, the other part of this is it doesn't matter if you tell them the truth. They think DEI just steps in and changes whole games that creators are forced by some unseen hand. The government, BlackRock, I guess, as well as just uh, people of color in general to make games more inclusive. Ironically, Kramer then posted, fighting misinformation would be great, but social media plus YouTube is not equipped to hold people accountable to doing real research in good faith. Just getting hits and proving their point in the absence of confirmation. It's wild out there. Nothing has changed. Nothing. Now, of course, if there hadn't been months and years, which we're going to see here in a second, and which I certainly remember, it's just, especially in a, in a heated conversation, you can't remember every single thing you've heard, even if internally you have heard them and you remember them. When someone's like, prove it, prove it, show the receipts. It's like, okay, well, I didn't have them all on hand, but I definitely remember saying this and this, thankfully, they have gone to the trouble at this uh, the park park place to list all these receipts that I remember. Um, <clears throat> Kramer then stated, sorry, no one has, no one thing has changed. The number of people who understand that spreading misinformation, misinformation just lets them be racist in public, but no consequences has increased dramatically. That has changed. Probably requires some fighting from those with authority. Probably. So this is all the bullshit. She was a shoveling. Uh, Kramer was not the only one to push the narrative. Kindred also spread it on blue sky. And by the way, yeah, I I do that the, that original point that uh, well, as I say, Nerd Wars was trying to make, and the nuance is that all of these companies, uh, and there are many of them, uh, like the SBI, all of these consulting companies, any studio that asks them has already been corrupted. Much of the e, uh, the ESG has already been done, and that's much of their complaints. SBI and others that they wish they could get there earlier to do more. However, there. Are, 
were many changes that Sweet Baby Inc. is trying to make it seem like they didn't do that I 100% believe they do. I, they're, they're, that's the thing is they're liars. So you really can't believe anything they're saying now when they know they're being attacked. But I do believe you can say, you can uh, trust the things they were saying a year ago when they were oh so proud. They were saying the quiet part out loud and they weren't hiding or they didn't have anyone blocked or conversations privated. So all this new shit is cope as far as I'm concerned. T targeted, coordinated, cope of them all lying and yes game developers as we've seen with that yash that thick yash the uh, senior narrative designer or whatever for uh bungie who of course now has deleted his tweet they're all backing up they're trying to they're helping in a coordinated misinformation campaign which is what this is all about yeah 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 kendra continue they don't know how many of us there are blah 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 so this is all of their lies uh here's more from chris kindred and when they have that many remember chris kindred that just attacked the dragon ball z guy that died yeah i called him racist that's fun when they have that many open spaces to play in they can create their own boogeyman they think we're actively making games worse you are when studios are the ones making the choices they balk at yeah and you're pushing them over the, I, i've said it before if studios in their games are on the edge of a dei woke cliff that it's like well it's annoying but it's not going to ruin the game people like sweet baby inc and chris kindred and kim blair they come in and they push that game right over the edge and they make saga anderson a full 50 50 50 of the story has to be played through her I swear to god that was their decision not just like a character that maybe is from an underrepresented group and they're adding just more fullness to it no 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 there's more as a unit, we have no power toward any of the clients we work with. They're mad at market conditions. They're mad at studio decisions. They're mad at the world changing away from their fascist beliefs. Kindred opined. They just need a punching bag, blah, blah, blah. No, we're just tired of you ruining the games. The, the proof is in the pudding. The game. Anyway, we've gone to that. Okay, so this is all their lies. It was more and more. Oh, good. Kindred being anti-Semitic. I don't know, man. Shit was fine after the first day, but the Zionists from earlier this week wore me down. I am entering a place. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's never surprising these so-called people that push for inclusion and diversity. When you hear what they actually say, it is it is the most actual racist, xenophobic, uh, bigoted. Uh, I, I just look at the results and how they treat people once they get called out. Back in 2019, Kim Belair did a presentation at the Game Developers Conference where she revealed just how her company and others like to manipulate and control video game studios. She said, if you're in, oh, here, let's see. I think it actually says it down here. Let's see. In development and you are part of like that dominant voice, you're like a cis hetero white dude or just adjacent to that. Do not wait until the end to call your consultants. Bring them in at the beginning and instead of asking them, hey, is this very racist thing we did very racist or is this deeply offensive thing we did deeply offensive? Are you hurt by it? Ask them what they want to see, like ask them what would thrill them, what would bring them joy. And if you have a team lead, put that request to them very, very early. Because uh they want to taint the soup as soon as possible, as early in the creation process as possible. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, Put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants. Oh, yeah. Here's here is where she's going to uh, suggest that you blackmail when you ask for research. Go have a coffee with your marketing team Extortion? and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want, because they have to consider like I, I say that a lot as a joke, but it's actually very, very true, because if you start to consider I the people who are player and audience facing and who have to deal with mitigating harm and with keeping the sentiment around their game and their project positive, there's like a genuine value that you can impress upon them with um, both ethically and financially. You can and can we talk about the irony of the most light skinned of light skinned half black women who's actually a fucking Canadian? What? What exactly does she know about the American black struggle, which is what most of the time they're consulting? Like, if the whole idea is, let's say, because this was an example put to me, that there's a black teen in L.A. and a consultant like this would come in and go, well, actually, we would say brother like this and we are ours or we wouldn't wear this clothing. We would wear what the what would this Canadian woman know? by her own words, this settler on treaty territory, whatever, seven or whatever weird thing it was. Well, what the hell would she know about the nuance of being a black American in America? I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. You could say this is important. And 
it's also a valid discussion to have because if you're working with a very thin narrative budget and you work in AAA, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised or dismayed by the amount of money that marketing can give you. Yeah, okay. Not only did Belair state all of this way back in 2019, but Alan Wake 2 game director Kyle Rowley appeared to credit Belair and Sweet Baby Inc. for race swapping Saga Anderson. I'm telling you, I'm fucking telling you they did. Games developer Alessandro Faleri reported in November 2023, for creating Saga Anderson, the developers at Remedy took a different approach compared to the process, but I said it British like the process, the process behind other hero characters, resulting in a more organic, creative collaboration. I hate when they use that word organic because it never is a more organic, creative collaboration across different dis uh, disciplines at Remedy Entertainment and outside parties, along with working and story and narrative consultant Kim Belair of Sweet Baby Inc. to refine the character voice and story arc. The key creatives of Alan Wake 2 also worked extensively with the actress playing Saga Anderson, Melanie Lebure, who offered suggestions and other insights that led to the Saga Anderson scene in the final game. Rowley informed the outlet, I think that it took us a long time to find Saga. It was an interesting process. We had an idea in our head on what the character could be, but then, as the character evolves over time, being open to changing her based on input from the actors and from external sources really opened things up for us. I think that's important for us as a studio to be okay with, because we don't do it very often for our characters. This idea of how to create a new hero character so it is kind of a big moment for us. And it was definitely interesting for me going through that process. I did it again. Uh, Saga Anderson was originally introduced as an Easter egg in Remedy's 2016 Quantum Break. She was portrayed by Finnish actress-singer Mala Malmavara. Oof. Alan Wake's two director, <coughs> creative director Sam Lake even revealed the character in 2015, sharing on Twitter, FBI agents Asaga Anderson and Alex Casey hard at work looking for a missing writer. So there she is, boys and girls, all 4% of you. There is the actual Saga Anderson. Lake went to confirm that Mal Malmavara was the actress playing Saga Anderson. He wrote on Twitter, the missing writer played by Ika Ville, the FBI. Yeah, so we were talking about Alan Wake. Rowley claimed Sweet Baby Inc. was not directly responsible for the race swap of Saga Anderson. Yes, of course, this was put to me. It's absolutely not true. Belair also confirmed she had been working on... Okay, and this is... I, here's the, oh, the timeline I actually think happened. This is 100% supposed to be Saga, and it was Saga in the beginning of Alan Wake 2. And then the ESG movement started getting pushed hard hard senior saint floyd uh, saint i was gonna do jesus saint floyd lionheart like as did but i don't have a copyright for that but he died and esg got pushed and blm happened and uh, maker black and lame and gay not that last part but at least the first two parts became very prevalent before companies even suggested anything and i think yes saga was supposed to be a part of alan wake 2 not a full 50 50 gameplay member but a part of it, part of the narrative, and uh, was made black to pacify that. And then Sweet Baby Ink came in and was like, oh, well, don't just make her black. Make her half of the game. And this and this and this and this. And then here we are. And yeah, part of the biggest problem of Alan Wake 2 was not necessarily that Saga was black. It was the fact that you had to play as her for 50% of the game. So I, I still, because that 50-50 equity is a whole Sweet Baby Ink thing, and I do believe that was their idea that they added it. So congratulations. Yeah, they didn't make her black, but they did make her 50% of the game. Blair also confirmed she'd been working on Marvel Spider-Man 2 since 2020. The game released in 2023. That's three years to muck it up. She wrote on X, working on this story since 2020 has been one of my greatest joys of my career. I mean that. The team at Insomniac Games could not have been more gracious, more inviting, more genuinely co uh, cooperative, collaborative, rather. And I'm so grateful for the space they made me and for Sweet Baby Inc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet Baby Inc. employees are also credited as screenwriters for Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, and the game's credit. Uh, I'm trying to see exactly what they said that they did. The credits also is a screen. Yeah, so script writers, script coordinators, junior script writer, script coordinator. Yeah, they're all over it. They're all over it. 
Rocksteady Roberts LinkedIn states he was a lead writer at Rocksteady. So they, and that was the other part of it. They're not just consulting on games. They're getting people hired, like full-time hired at these studios. So here we have, so we're from Sweet Baby Inc. Was a lead script writer and lead writer at Rocksteady, where he managed a team of diverse and talented writers on Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, where they, of course, decided to kill them all. I was in the title and igni ignominiously, if one might use that word correctly, except for Wonder Woman, of course, who got a glow up. Yeah, all of them. He joined Sweet Baby Inc. in July 2023. So they, they fail upward. Lead writer at Rocksteady where he did this and then he immediately starts working for Sweet Baby Inc. And we're seeing them hire other people from Sweet Baby. So it's it's a big circle of fuckery. Uh, there's also an entire credit for Sweet Baby Inc. with Kim Belair and all these names. 13 writers. And you're telling me, yeah, you're telling me 13 writers on this and they barely had anything, huh? We're working on it for three years, but we just came in at the end. Sure. Clearly, Sweet Baby Inc. has significant influence over these major studios. Belair admits to employing fear tactics, and you saw her say it herself. Said she was joking, but then she goes, yeah, but it's true. Uh, so she wasn't joking. Belair admits to employing fear tactics in order to get studios to work with them. Not only that, but it appears they were involved in... Yeah, no, 100%. If not involved with her, certainly the equity of her being 50% of the game, which was the major... Uh, complaint. What do you make of this misinformation campaign that these sweet baby ink employees attempted to run on us? I think it fucking worked for some of us. Uh, you know, <clears throat> nuance is fine. And uh, Nerd Wars' ultimate point in pointing out if any of this is true is so that we don't get caught, that we don't get caught up in being right, which is true, and we don't get caught up in the same traps of the legacy going, ah, they're just stupid YouTubers. Look at this information. That being said, I think you can see from this article, Sweet Baby Inc. has contradicted itself, all right? They say, oh, no, we just come in at the end, but then also they've been working on the game for three years and 13 people are working on it. Oh, no, they didn't have a hand in this, but then while making and finding the character, we had substantial hope from outside sources. So the first part of what they said it does not line up with what they're saying now, and that is just it. Doesn't smell right. Doesn't smell right. Nothing about this smells right. They're going to keep obfuscating the truth. They're going to keep. That's a whole point. It's. It is a culture war, and it is a real one. But it's also a cold one. We're not actually physically fighting, even though these nutters think that, uh, that words are violence or whatever the fuck it is. That being said, in a war, cold or otherwise, propaganda will be a plenty. Uh, that's just the name of the game, trying to confuse information so no one knows what's what. Gee, I wonder where else we're seeing that. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Uh, make sure to like, share, and sub. If you've done that, thank you. If you're going to do that, thank you. We will see you on the next one. Well, bye.